The Johns and I are here at the, uh, the Columbia River at the Rocky Reach Dam. Uh, we're here to uh, give you a little education on where the data center power comes from, from the uh, hydro dams that are on the Columbia River. Now, Rocky Reach Dam actually does not provide directly the power that comes to our data centers in Wenatchee and in Quincy, uh, but it is very similar to the other dams that our, our power comes from. And we're excited to give you a quick tour and education on what a dam looks like and how it works. John, do you know how many dams are on the Columbia River? As a matter of fact, I do, John. <laughs> there are 60 dams overall on the Columbia River, and on the main stem, which we're at, there are 14. Awesome. Well, let's go have some damn fun and take a tour. This is going to be a damn good time. <laughs> <laughs> We're here along the Columbia River. It starts up in Canada. There are 14 dams along the Columbia River and 11 of them are here in Washington State. So the Chelan County PUD owns those shown here in red, the Lake Chelan Dam, the Rocky Reach Dam, and the Rock Island Dam. The Columbia River flows then down and meets that state line between Washington and Oregon and out into the ocean. So Rocky Reach Dam was built between 1956 and 1961. This is a true gravity dam. We've got four billion pounds of concrete, center of gravity, pushing it down toward the center of the earth. Got a little over a billion pounds of hydrostatic pressure, hydro water, static still, just the weight of the water leaning against the wall. But four billion pounds going down beats one billion pounds going this way every time. From the top of the dam on the four base side to the bedrock is 218 feet. So if you lift Rocky Reach Dam out of the river, set it next to the highway, it's a 21 story tall, four billion pound structure. It's a great big structure. The water on the north side of the dam is 100 feet higher than the water on the south side of the dam. That gives us our head, which is where we can drop the water on our turbines. We have 11 units, uh, each turbine, we drop about, nine, uh, about 8 million gallons of water a minute. It falls about 92 feet. It turns a turbine, shaft, and a rotor. Combined weight of everything that spins on each one of our units is about two and a half million pounds. So we get that guy spinning, 90 RPMs, not 91, not 89, 90, so that we can synchronize with the 60 hertz cycle. He starts putting power on the grid. Uh, I'll take you guys down into a unit today, uh, the unit we're gonna go into. It's gonna be about almost eight million gallons of water a minute, turning two and a half million pounds of steel generating about 140,000 mechanical horsepower, which is the equivalent of about 25 modern day diesel train engines pulling a train down a track. So a whole lot of energy going through here. We have 11 of those units. I'll walk you across, ask any questions you want. Awesome. Sound good? Yep. And STEM requirements in Washington State have public school students studying fish anatomy, fish migration, fish life cycle, several different years during their school career. So when we designed the facility, we wanted everything to be um, productive in our partnerships with the school districts. Three primary things we do. Number one is safety. Everybody gets to go home at the end of the day. And then number two and three, they're, they're co-equals. There's not one that's more important than the other. We generate power and we move fish. If we don't move fish, we can't generate power. And so we move fish for two obvious reasons. One, we need to, right? It's our responsibility. We've got this great natural resource. We want to protect it so our grandkids can catch salmon, right? And then, of course, the federal government says if you don't meet your minimal survival standards, then you can't generate power. So, so those two go together. So uh, this is the main attraction when the fish are running. This is uh, one step, so there's 100 steps. Each one is 16 by 16 by 16. There's one linear foot differential. We got gravitational flow going down, attracts the adult salmon that want to swim into the current on their way back to their needle stream. They swim right up the ladder, come out on the top side. There's alternating orifices that they can swim through. It gives them a resting area in each step. And uh, the concept is to make it no more challenging to get up the ladder than it is to just go up the river. We always share the story of the life cycle of the Pacific lamprey and the life cycle of the salmon. They kind of need each other in a lot of ways. So they're kind of best friends for the part of the journey and then they're kind of worst enemies for another part of the journey. <laughs> but 
um, their relationship enables the migrations of both species to continue. That is a 4,600 foot long, nine foot diameter super water slide for baby salmon. Right. So the concept is just to take the juvenile salmon around the dam in a bypass versus them going through turbines and overspill. The dewatering pumps are under here. They push the top 40 feet of the river this way. Flow's coming in, so no matter where salmon come, they're gonna do this. We bring about 6,500 cubic feet of water a second into these channels. That creates the current that's going to attract those salmon to come in. As the channel narrows, the majority of the water goes back into the forebay to get used again. The juvenile salmon, they can't get through the screens, so they come down, they turn, they enter the pipe. That's the second part. Hmm. That's pretty cool. It's cool stuff, man. Yeah. yeah. Here's the entrance to those intake channels. One and then two. And that's what's drawing those juvenile salmon in. So if you look straight down, you're looking at that adult fish ladder. Yeah. Fish do not have to jump over the top, they swim through. The Columbia River starts in British Columbia, Canada. 2,690 feet above sea level, four and a half space needles up in the air. And it empties between Washington and Oregon, right? Into the Pacific. And it's only 1,243 miles long. You recognize it drops two and a quarter feet per mile. By comparison, the Mississippi River drops three inches per mile. So the Columbia River is this incredible natural resource. It's a river on a hill. And because it's a river on a hill and because of this thing called gravity, We've got the two things you need to generate power. We've got lots of water and we've got lots of drop. And so the Columbia River is the largest hydroelectric producing river in both North and South America. And what I mean by that is we don't have the biggest dam. Any one of our dams is not the biggest, but the water that's going through Grand Coulee right now is going through a turbine, putting power on the grid. That same water now is gonna to come to Chief Joseph Dam go through a turbine, put power on the grid. That same water then is gonna show up at wells and then here. So 11 times in America, that what we think of as block of water is being used to generate power. We're picking up hard hats. You're looking at some turbine blades on the floor. Each one of those blades is stainless steel, uh, 17,500 pounds a piece. So this is just a good schematic to let you know where we're going because when we go there, it's gonna be about 100 decibels. You're not gonna be able to hear a word I say. So this is one of our units. And the best way for me to describe this unit to you is for you to imagine this is the top side of the dam and this is the bottom side. So we're gonna drop about 8 million gallons of water a minute, 92 feet. These are wicket gates, and these wicket gates actually go all the way around the turbine. They're just like vertical blinds in your house. When you pull the cord and all your blinds close in unison or open, these wicket gates, we've got an O-ring here with two governing arms. So as we turn that O-ring, all of those wicket gates are either gonna close, that shuts the unit down, or they're gonna open, lets the water come in, pressure builds up, we go on the grid. So we're gonna drop about 8 million gallons of water a minute. It's gonna intake about 92 feet. And we're gonna start spinning this turbine, this shaft, and this rotor. I give you weights, but we've got some different sizes out there. So I'm just gonna give you an overall picture. The combined weight of the turbine, which weighs in the neighborhood of 400,000 pounds, and the shaft and a 426 ton rotor. When the water hits it, the way it hits the blades, it's gonna fractionally lift and spin. Everything that's spinning is about two and a half million pounds. This is your rotor. Best way to think of it is magnets. North pole, south pole, north pole, south pole, north pole, south pole. Surrounded by a stator, which is just your coiled copper. So you got eight million gallons of water a minute, spinning two and a half million pounds, 90 RPMs. Surface speed of this guy is about 125 miles an hour. The tolerance between him and the stator, your coiled copper is about three eighths of an inch. Wow. Tight tolerance. Yeah. So that's your air gap, that's where you're generating your electromagnetic current. So now that's your electricity, your current. So are you providing data centers that Microsoft's and other agencies rent from you? Or yes. Leave? Okay, yep. I got you. So you're yep. the infrastructure. Correct. And you're the host. Correct. Gotcha. Yep.
We're making sure that shaft stays upright, that it doesn't do that. Very, very tight tolerance. Shaft is made out of? Pardon me? Shaft is made out of aluminum, Stainless steel. steel. What's that? Stainless steel. It's got a little core down the middle. We run hydraulic lines down into a servo motor so we can change the pitch of the blades. If you look all the way down as far as you can see, if you look carefully, you'll see bubbly water. That's the top of the turbine. doing so underneath that yeah see the big o-ring yeah see this arm there's another arm over there when one pushes one pulls that ring turns underneath those wicket gates open and close it's about a three minute process so we can go from nothing to putting power on the grid in about three minutes right hub that you just saw the blades will get put in the cone will get put on on top of that turbine so the turbine will get lowered into its shaft on top of the turbine the shaft will be attached on top of the shaft it's going to be this rotor it's got 84 poles this is what's spinning 125 mile an hour surface speed so this guy is going to sit inside this stator this is where your coil copper is Shaft will be below, turbine down on the bottom. Start spinning, we're generating. There's your three copper buses that are gonna take the energy out. So wind and solar are clean and renewable, right? But hydro is clean, renewable, and reliable. Right. Thank you. That Thanks was for awesome. coming. All right, appreciate it. And right. you owe us a tour. We owe you a tour. We'll, we'll see you soon. All right, thank All right, you so thanks. much.